Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and this is the second in our series of the Cricut classes. Now, last week I showed just the basics of what you got in your kit and told you to go ahead and, you know, click on the link and download the design space, that kind of thing. So plug, take your Cricut out of the box, plug it up. I had some people who told me that they didn't get the materials that came in mine and I'm not sure I'm pretty sure that came in my explore air I don't have the explore air 2 I have the explore air and the maker but if you didn't get those materials I'm gonna leave a link below where you can click on that link and go over and you should be able to see everything that was in my little booklets it's just basically showing you how to plug it up um, where to put the pen, how to put the pen, that kind of thing. And that's some of the same things that I'm going to be showing you here. So first off, what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit about the Cricut mats. Now, this is something that I didn't have anybody tell me. And I wish I had have had someone tell me because the Cricut mats, I don't care if you get the light grip, which is what this one says, light grip, or if you get the heavy grip, they're all very, very sticky. And if you use a cardstock that is not really, really thick, then when you try to pull that cardstock up, it just rolls. And I hate that. I hate, hate, hate that. So I condition all of my mat, all of my my mats and Cricut I think has started telling people to condition their mats as well and what that means now this one's already conditioned but I'm going to show you take your little plastic cover off and what I do is I use the palms of my hands and I go over this Cricut mat with my hands over and over and over that's get, taking a little bit of that oil off of your hands and putting it onto your Cricut mat then I also take just some scrap paper and I'll lay it down on my mat and pull it up, lay it down and pull it up, lay it down and pull it up. Sometimes when they're even really, really, really sticky, I will I will take a towel and put it down on a towel and put my mat on that. I don't do that unless they're just really tacky and I can't get all of that, you know, some of that tackiness off. Because you don't want any fuzz on your mat. You just want it to be tacky enough that when you put a piece of paper down on it you can pull it right back up and not have that paper curl up and roll up and I will tell you this your different papers are going to react differently to your mat this is a pretty nice cardstock when you can feel of a cardstock and it feels slick it doesn't feel grainy then that's a pretty good cardstock so when you put that cardstock down and then you start to pull it up and let me get to my little tool here I use this tool a lot and I just go right under the edge of it and then I hold my mat down and I pull straight up on my paper I don't pull back this way because that will curl your paper I just stick it down on there I lift up a little corner and then I just pull straight up on my paper while I'm holding my mat down like that. Now you should have also got, and I had to get up and go get mine, and mine is pretty dirty as you can see, but I clean these all the time. So you should have also got one of these little tools with your Cricut. Now this paper doesn't feel the same as this paper. When you've been dealing with paper as many years as I have, I can pick up a paper and feel of it and tell if it's going to cut good on the Cricut or not. This one is probably not going to cut as good as this one is. I'm going to have to probably slow it down a little bit to cut this one because this one's a little bit more grainy. But just lay your paper down. And this is after you have conditioned your mat. And then just pull straight up on the paper while you're working your hand under it to work that across and that doesn't make your paper curl now this is after you conditioned i want to make sure i tell you that you condition that mat really really well this is just a whole piece and a lot of times i will fold the corner of my mat down and i'll pull up on that paper while i'm running my hand underneath i'm pulling straight up on that paper so that it doesn't curl 
So that's what you need to do first with your mats is go through and condition all of your mats by putting your hand on them, taking a scrap piece of paper, putting it on, pulling it off, putting it on, pull it off. And then when you start to pull up your project, your cut, make sure that you pull straight up instead of like this. If you pull like that, then you're going to curl that. So just pull straight up while working your hand underneath. And then I always keep my plastic on top of my mats when I store them. That just keeps the dust and everything from getting on them. And if your house is like mine, you can dust today. And this afternoon, the dust is right back where it was. So sometimes I wonder why we even dust. But then... I brought my, I'm going to bring my Cricut in here. Hopefully you can see. Now, like I said, mine is the Cricut Air. Uh, Cricut Explore Air. It's not the Explore Air 2. It's just Explore Air. And I love it. It does everything that I need it to do except cut chipboard. And that's what my maker is for. So, what we're going to do. Take this mat again. I'm going to go ahead, and I don't have mine plugged in, but I'm going to go ahead and open it up. It will open if it's not plugged in. You just press the button and it opens up. And I think you'll be able to see these. Now, this dial over here is telling you every, it's got paper, vinyl, iron-on, light cardstock, cardstock, fabric, poster board, and then custom. I keep mine normally on custom, and the reason being is I cut a lot of different materials, and so I keep it on custom, and when I pull up my access, and I will, we will go into access next week, and I'll show you all about access and everything like that, but when I pull up my access, then I start to cut something that it's going to show me all the different materials that I can choose from. And I just choose them on my computer instead of trying to choose them here and maybe get a little bit off. You could choose it on here if you want to. I have done that plenty of times. If I'm just cutting cardstock over and over and over again, sometimes I'll just put it on cardstock and leave it. That way I don't have to choose it on my computer each time. But um, most of the time I keep it on custom and then that prompts me when that when I go to cut and then continue choose my explore then it will bring up and ask me what material I'm going to be cutting and that prompts me to make sure that I put in the right material because I go from vinyl to cardstock to thin paper to tissue paper whatever so it prompts me and helps me remember what I need to cut. Okay, you can see mine is well loved. It's kind of dirty, but uh, I do clean this. I'll just take my alcohol and I clean it up really good about once a month or so. It's got this little tray right here, and I have never used this tray, to be honest with you, because normally when I need my tools that would normally store in here, I have a piece of paper across that, so I don't re really ever use it. On this side, you've got a place that you can keep your different uh, cutting materials and th that kind of thing, your blades and stuff. All right, this one has a an A side and a B side. Now, what your A side is for is for your pens and your score tool. And then this is one of the pens. You probably got this with your um, maker or Cricut Explorer, whatever. This pen has an arrow on it right here. When you take that top off and you start to insert this pen in this side to, to do whatever, you make sure that you put your finger under and hold the bottom of that casing. And then make sure that arrow is pointed toward you so that you can see it. And when you put that pen down in there, you're going to push until that arrow disappears. And once that arrow disappears down in there, you know that you've got your pen down as far as you need it so that it will draw correctly on your paper. But then when you're not using that pen, make sure you take it out and that you close it back up. Now, holding that housing on the bottom keeps that housing from being pushed down when you push your pen down in there. So make sure that you hold that up. This is the housing for your cutting blade. So you can open this up. So to change your cutting blade, you can just pop this open, pull that back, and then change your cutting blade. Pull that out and change it. Now we will go over changing the blade in these and all of that at a little bit later date. Right now, if you just got it, you're not going to need to change your blade. So just keep in mind those two things. Now when you start to load 
your mat. Let's just put a piece of paper on our mat. When you start to load the mat, you want to make sure that that mat is underneath these two little guards right here. There's a guard on each side. Make sure that it's centered up and underneath those guards. And then you're going to push it all the way back until it's touching the rollers back here. And once it's touching those rollers, then you're just going to hit the arrow key that should be flashing when you're ready to cut. Hit that arrow key and it will pull it in. Now you need to be holding the end of that mat while you do that. I just hold it in the center. I kind of put some light pressure on it to make sure that it's good and tight up against that bar. And then I press that arrow key and it pulls it right in. When you get finished cutting, the arrow key will light up again and you just press it to pull that mat out. Then uh, when you have that mat loaded, your Cricut, little Cricut button here should light up. Start flashing, that's telling you if you press that, then you're gonna start cutting. This is your pause button. If you start cutting and you, it's not cutting like you want to or you need to pause just for a second to look at something, you just hit that pause button and it'll pause right where it is. And then when you hit that pause button again, it will start back up where it's where it ended. So that's what you need to know on that. Now, if you have cartridges from an old Cricut, this is where in the Explore Air and the Explore Air 2 has the same thing. This is where you can load those cartridges in. Have your Cricut plugged in. Um, have your access up and then you need to put the cartridges in here just load them down in there and it will upload them into Cricut Design Space and it'll have a list of your cartridges on there so you can use your cartridges or you can use what is in Design Space so that's what you need to where you need to put your little cartridges right there I've loaded all of mine in and then I got rid of my cartridges because once you load them in they're in there and you don't have to have that cartridge anymore this is just a little storage compartment where you can store pens or different things in there so that is the basics of the Cricut. Now, like I said, every so often I take air, that canned air, and I blow my Cricut out. I blow all the trash out of it because it gets a lot of paper trash in here. And then I take alcohol and some wipes and I wipe all of the dirt and everything off of it. And I try to keep it closed when I'm not using it. That keeps the dust out of the inside of it. So that are th is some of the things that you need to know on the Cricut itself. So we're going to close that back up and then I'm going to put that back away. Okay, so that is just some basic information about your mats, about loading your paper, loading your mats in and setting the dial and then loading your pens. That's basic information. I know anyone who's used the Cricut for any time at all already knows all of this probably. But I got lots of messages after last Friday's uh, video and I had a lot of you that told me that you were so glad that I did these because you just now got a Cricut and after the video you actually opened it up and got started. So between now and next Friday, go ahead and leave me any questions that you have. I've got, I'm loading all the questions up here on my paper and I will answer questions as we go along, as we get to that particular subject. So make sure that you leave any questions that you have down below. Doesn't matter how, what question it is, as long as it's pertaining to the Cricut. And we will go over all of that. The next Friday, we're gonna start working with Design Space. So I'm gonna open up my Design Space on the computer screen, and I'm gonna walk you through how to do some different things on Design Space and what each one of the icons and things are on there and how you use them so i hope you enjoyed this just a quick tutorial and we will talk to you later thank you so much for watching and if you're not subscribed i'd appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button we'll talk to you guys later